afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host with the most ton, a ton of summer fun, Ken Hill, and welcome to episode 19 of the Wrestling Connection. We may be a week away from the 4th of July, but there are already fireworks going into this Sunday with the, uh, with the, uh, <laughs> the much anticipated Money in the Bank pay per view, which we'll be covering later. Later in, the sh later in the show with our special Money in the Bank paper preview. In the meantime, we, we will, we'll go into our week in, in review. One of the uh, more interesting stories to come, to come from this Monday night on Raw was the, encounter, was the uh, confrontation between now former SmackDown general manager Vicky Guerrero and the principal owner of WWE, Stephanie McMahon. As you, as you can see, as you can see, Stephanie was none too happy about Vicky allowing Roman Reigns to compete in last week's Battle Royal for the last spot in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match. Essentially, having Vicky get on her knees and beg for for her job, Stephanie ended up deeming her pathetic, in her words, and accused her of riding her late husband Eddie Guerrero's coat coattails when they took pity on her by offering her by offering her a job with WWE since 2006. Vicky would take offense to that, and Stephanie would offer an opportunity for Vicky to keep her job. Either, either she'd be fired on the spot, or she could keep her job as SmackDown General Manager if she competed in a match against Stephanie. Now, of course, you had Vicky, Vicky feeling like this may have been her last time out, Came out, came out to her late husband Eddie Guerrero's m music, and and to the adoration of the crowd. Believe it or not, despite Vicky being a uh, heel figure in in the eyes of WWE for many years. Now, of course, this is Ste this is Stephanie McMahon, a McMahon. So you know they always have a way of throwing a wrench into things. This didn't end up being a wrestling match, rather something of a mud pool match. And Stephanie wasn't dressed to compete. Rather, she brought out three divas to do her dirty work for her, so to speak. <laughs> oh, okay, you got me. You got me. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna miss hearing that. Um, the stipulation being that whoever got, th if Vicky got thrown in the muck, she'd be fired. Now, Vicky managed to dodge all three of the divas that Stephanie sent out, only to be unceremoniously tossed into the pool by Stephanie herself. Now, Stephanie would get, would celebrate, was too much of a sore winner, celebrating right between Vicky and the muck. And Vicky, realizing that she no longer had a job, also realized she had no nothing left to lose, and unceremoniously, tossed the principal owner of the WWE, and she went for a nice, relaxing mud bath swim. Stephanie has never looked better. And of course, and of course, we could, of course, like any Guerrero, any Guerrero who knows how to lie, cheat, and steal, Vicky ended it with a classic Latino heat shimmy in honor of her, of her, late, of her late husband. God bless you, Vicky, and Godspeed. Changing gears now, we had the Money in the Bank ladder match com coming up. Seth Rollins was already an announced as the first entrant, and there were several other entrants announced. One of those, be one of those being Rob, Rob Van Dam, a former Money in the Bank winner from 2006. RVD had some harsh, surprisingly harsh words for for Rollins, and and vice versa. And the two, and the two. Just like any two wrestlers with an with an issue, settled in the ring. It was a surprise, it, and to no, the surprise of no one, it was, with between RVD and Rollins, it was a highly athletic contest. Many high flying maneuvers, as you can see here. RV, as you can see here, RV, RVD nailing a spinning DDT off the top top rope. Very impressive for someone at RVD's advanced age. Rollins would close in though on the on the victory. You see RVD here with an impressive uh, leg roll-up, getting a near fall. Rollins would eventually come out on top with the curb stomp, 
but a certain former friend and former member of the Shield got the jump on Rollins. Boom! Mm -hmm. Oh, this, of course, but Dean, Dean Ambrose coming out of, the, out of the crowd to the delight of everyone, getting the jump on, on Rollins, is tr the traitor the traitorous member of the S.H.I.E.L.D., and sent Seth scurrying up, up the ramp. Now, Ambrose had some not-so-nice words for, for Rollins himself. He was tired of Rollins getting away at every turn. He was tired of Rollins just, just escaping his grasp before Dean could truly get his hands on him. And Ambrose... Ambrose... Apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. We have a... Ah! Thank you. Dean was tired of Ambro of Rollins always seemingly slipping away at the last minute and promised that he would get his hands on one way or another at Money in the Bank, promising that even if he even if he wasn't in the ladder match along with Rollins, he would find a way to get to the pay-per-view. He would interfere, he would climb up the ladder, he would steal the briefcase, and he would ru he would ruin the entire pay-per-view if it meant getting back at Rollins. This forced Rollins this forced Rollins' hand who Seth Rollins hand, he went to the COO, Triple H, and essentially forced and essentially forced Triple H into letting Ambrose into the money in the bank ladder ladder match where Rollins could quote unquote keep an eye on him. I am the game <laughs> See, that he is. But seems like Ambrose is playing playing some head games of his own with the COO and and Rollins. Was this a smart move by Rollins, c convincing Triple H to let Ambrose into the match? Or was this Ambrose playing some mind games of his own with the cerebral assassin himself? It remains to be seen coming up this Sunday. Now, now two of the competitors announced for the Money in the, ba Money in the Bank ladder match were the show-off Dolph Ziggler, who I'll be highlighting la later on, and the Intercontinental Champion... The bearer of bad news himself, bad news Barrett. They had a highly competitive Intercontinental Championship match. Dolph Ziggler, having pinned Barrett in a non-title match this past Friday on SmackDown, received a championship opportunity against the English against the Englishman Brawler, and it was a hot it was a hotly contested match. Several near falls, both men hitting their signature maneuvers. And it seemed like Dolph was closing in on the on the Intercontinental title. I mean, he was back. In, I mean, it seemed like he was closing in, and it seemed like many times that either man could have put the, couldn't put the other away. You see, you see, you see Barrett coming off here with a devastating, devastating elbow drop onto Ziggler on, onto the outside. You have Ziggler hit, hitting hitting a top rope face buster, which picked up an, an, a near fall, near fall for the show off. You, Barrett even hitting his signature waist, waist slam maneuver get, and couldn't quite put the show off away. However, as Ziggler was coming in for another cor corner splash, B Barrett got that patented bull hammer elbow, that feared bull hammer elbow, r smack dab into Ziggler's face, caught him cold and knocked him out for the, th for the pinfall and able to retain his championship, intercontinental championship going into this Sunday. Now as, now, as for the WWE World Title ladder match, the big story here, the big story here is Roman Reigns being the match. Now, while Triple H certainly didn't improve, and he could have just as easily pulled Ra Reigns out of the match, Triple H had another idea in mind, announcing at the last minute that Kane would be the latest entrant into the money, the Demon Kane would be the latest entrant into the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, of course, this was considered a be-all, end-all threat to, to all the superstars involved in the match. As you can see here, Kane having already laid out every, John Cena, Sheamus, Sheamus and others, with, with, chokes, with choke slams abound, but Roman Reigns would be having none of that, as right after Kane set off his pyro, sh after show Happy Romans, birthday, Grandma. Okay. Our crack sound effects team at work. 
Reigns would lay out Kane with a, with a spear and show to Triple H the true, true symbol. It's peanut butter jelly time. Are you guys done yet? Are you guys done? Are we good? Any more jokes? Get them out of your system now. All right. Reigns would show his dominance to Triple. Reigns would show his dominance to Triple H and prove to be the big dog in, in the hunt for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship wh match, which I'll highlight later in our paper preview. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it's an interesting case for the, for this week as I. The person I'm calling out for this week's Ken's Den is also who I will be highlighting in this week's Superstar Profile and What a Maneuver. The show-off himself, Dolph Ziggler. As you can see... Don't miss... Once again, our, producer, our producer's at work. As D Dolph Ziggler, picture, pictured here, popped onto the scene in WWE in around, t around 2000, 2006, originally as, the, as a member of the... I'm here to show the world, I'm here to show the world. Come on, I gotta I got admit, this, this, is, this, is one, this is one of my favorite songs. Uh, Dolph Ziggler popped onto the scene around 2000, around early 2006, originally as a member of the uh, <laughs> not so popular Spirit Squad. Essentially, a bunch of male cheerleaders who actually upset Kane and Big Show for the World Tag Team Titles in 2006, to the shock of many, and held it for the duration of the year. However, shortly after they lost the tag team titles, uh, the bulk of the Spirit Squad would find themselves back down in uh, WWE's developmental program, where he, where he, Dolph Ziggler, a.k.a. Nick Nemeth, was repackaged as Dolph Ziggler and sent back to w up to WWE in 2008. At the time, he didn't really have much of a personality outside of just being a cool, cocky, bleach blonde superstar, but he would sooner than later fi find success winning multiple intercontinental and U.S. championships, and was known for having a very fast-paced athle athletic style, and also known for his uh, style of selling. Essentially, if you ever watch a Dolph Ziggler match, watch when he does a splash into the corner and misses, and w the way he launches himself out, the way he sells anytime he gets kicked, punched, slammed, he makes it look like he's, he's being jettisoned out of a car in a car accident. That, that's how good, that's how, well, good, sometimes exaggerated, this, this, this young man can be when it, when it, when it comes to his luck, when it comes to his art for professional wrestling. Current, like I said, Ziggler is a multiple time intercontinental and United States champion. He has also held the, the World Heavyweight Championship on two separate occasions. The first time for a, uh, for a sparse 16 minutes. The second time coming after a w after he won the Money in the Bank briefcase, and the night after WrestleMania in 2013, cashed in the world the briefcase against the current ch then champion Alberto De Rio, pinning the uh, erstwhile champion to claim his second World Heavyweight Championship. However, Ziggler's reign second reign wouldn't fare as w much better than the first only holding it for 69 days until losing it back to Alberto Del Rio. Currently, Ziggler is competing in his third, is competing in his fifth, fourth. Dolph Ziggler. His fourth Money in the Bank ladder match, and he hopes to repeat the same success that he did in 2013. However, there are a couple of things concerning Mr. Showoff that I would like to, that I'd like to cover in Ken's Den. You see, 
I have no, you see, I have no. We already did the howling, guys. That was what the opening segment was for. That's going to be me when I get into that room, at, room in 20 minutes. Anyway, moving on. Now, while I have no doubt that Ziggler is ultra-athletic, ultra-talented, he's been a mainstay in WWE for the last two, three years, he has never quite reached that cusp of superstardom. He has never made it quite stayed on the main event scene for long enough. He's always been seen as a mid-carder, uh, an enhancement talent, talent, if you will, a jobber to the stars. While he's been good with it in his mediocrity, he's never quite made it He's never quite carved his niche into the main event scene like he's liked to. And the problem with that is Dolph has always, like his character, much like his character, he's been very outspoken. He's been outspoken in on YouTube. He's been outspoken on Twitter. And a lot of the comments and a lot of the things he says about himself and WWE aren't always PG. They don't always go with the WWE grain. And it's, always, it's, it's been a big part of the reason why he's been held back. Politics do play a factor into w into professional wrestling, like it or not. And Dolph doesn't seem willing to play that game. He just seems to be wanting to get by on his athleticism and his skills and his popularity, his connection with the audience alone. You gotta have you gotta have the you gotta have the uh, you gotta have the political savvy. You gotta have the backstage savvy if you want to make it in professional wrestling. The other thing is, I see he has the passion. He has the edge. He wants. I've seen it in his promos, I've seen it in his backstage promos. If you look up Dolph Ziggler backstage promo, you will see some of the most passionate words I have ever seen anyone speak. He knows how bad he knows how badly he wants in the main event scene. He wants it, he needs he needs it, he craves it. But the bottom line is, he needs to wisen up, he needs to start toning things down. He needs to realize that as long as he keeps speaking, he, speaking out, as long as he keeps playing, as, as long as he keeps like going to path of CM Punk, as long as he keeps rebelling and speaking out against authority, both on, in character and out of character, he's never going to get anywhere. He's going to be stuck in the in the same position that he, that he is now. He's he was a mid carter. He was a mid carter in 2008. He's a mid he's a mid car. He's essentially a mid carter now. Just just a slightly more elevated one. You have to, if Ziggler, Ziggler, if you're if you're gonna win this this Sunday, you say you want this, you say you want to feel that same success, that same sense of accomplishment when you won the world title last year, when you cashed in that money in the bank. If you want to feel that same kind of success, if you want to stay in that same position of success, you gotta wisen up, you gotta smarten up, and realize that for everything that you say and do there is a consequence. And no matter how athletic you are, no matter how talented you are, you could be the most talented guy, you could be the most talented guy in the locker room. The reality is, it's not going to happen. You're, you're not going to be a long-standing world champion if you don't snap out of it. And, and wise enough. Now, that being said, one of my favorite maneuvers that one of signature one of Ziggler's signature maneuvers it is what's called the is what's called the zigzag. Now of course now of course <laughs> of course I can't demonstrate it. I did I didn't bring any I didn't bring in a photo today of of the of the zigzag. Thank you. You can see here in it, in that crowning moment when he hit the zigzag on Mr. Del Rio right here to win his world title. As you can see, the, zig, the zigzag is something of a jumping reverse bulldog, where instead of where like a typical bulldog maneuver, a bold bulldog driver is where the opponent you, you take your opponent's head and just run and drive it into the mat into a sitting position. In this case. As you can see here, Ziggler pulls back on, on his opponent, slamming the back of their head in, into the mat and going back with them. Now, Ziggler just used to do this straight up. He just used to jump straight up, pull his opponent's head back, and slam into the mat. 
But the problem with that is Ziggler would end up hitting his head just as hard as he hit, hit his opponent, and of course that would lead, that could that had the potential to lead to con concussion, which Ziggler has suffered at one time or another in his career. As you, as you can see here, Dolph has more is more of a side position, more of a more of a lariat takedown to his zigzag, so he still slams his opponent head the back of her head into the mat, but also allevi alleviates enough stress so he doesn't slam his own head into the mat, mat as well. A, mo a fantastic move with a lot of with a lot of with a lot of snap, and it looks really cool too. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Before, right before we go into our paper preview segment, it is now time for a little education, a little, a little journey into the encyclo encyclopedia of professional wrestling I like to call Pro Wrestling 101. And this, and this, week, and this week, I like to enlighten everyone on the terms of, prof of professional wrestlers, the, the tiers, the levels of, of professional wrestling. Now, at the, at the bottom, you have, your, you have your jobbers, who are essentially just, they could be local talent, they could, be, they could just be established, ta established talent, just tossed out there for a monster heel or a more established, more high-level high superstar just to polish off and look good and, and dominant. You have your ham you have your ham and eggers, who which is <laughs> I know it sounds a very, like a really tasty term. It was actually coined by let the legend like the legendary manager and announcer, Bobby the Brain Heenan, who defined ham and egger as someone who essentially did who essentially was a jobber who barely made enough doing their doing their job to have enough for a ham and egg breakfast. Very witty. Now, of course, you have your low, you have your low card, essentially wrestlers that go on at the beginning of the match. Low carders, they kind of, they they get the, they get the audience, they get the audience warmed up. They get the some a match, a match. It's usually the match that goes on first, like for Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown or even for a pay per view. A match that really gets the, the blood flowing through the audience. It gets the crowd going. They can be just as essential to the to, to the beginning beginning of a show as the main the main eventers can can be to the end of it. Now, of course, you have your mid, you have your mid carters, which usually make up the bulk of the ro of a wrestling roster. Essentially, mid carters can be anywhere from tag team champions to intercontinental champions, United States champion United States champions, and I mean. The main problem with mid carters is it's usually in the middle of the show. Usually, when people are starting to think about getting up, they want to, you know, maybe take a bathroom break. They want their their job is to essentially keep the audience wrapped in, into the match, keep them interested, keep just keep the the mood of the sh mood of the show going. Because I mean, if you have if you have a little if you have a little bump in, during the middle of the show. If you have like a big like emotional promo, you have a big emotional moment. You want to bring, you want to bring, you want to have a mid card match to sort of you know dial things down, get people back into the into the mood, into the overall happy mood of the show. Now we move on from main eventer, we move on to mid carders, of course, to the main event. Now, of course, in the in the main event, you have you have your top tier superstars. You have your main event superstars like, say, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, uh, Rand, Rand, Randy. The Lesnar. champ is here. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be. He's, he's gonna. Oh, I wish I wish the champ was here. We'd get we get we'd probably get more ratings. Um, like like I said, like John Cena, like Randy Orton, essentially. Their part, their part in, in the show, is the build up to. It's the big finish. It's the big climax of the show. You want to have, you want to have a big main event. You want to have the biggest possible finish poss possible. Whether it's a main event promo or whether it's an actual main event wrestling match, 
Like you want you want to have something impactful. You want to have something that sends the crowd home, crowd home buzzing. S sends them or sends them home happy. Sends them home buzzing. Just as long as you send them home taught, like with the memory of the show. That the memory of the show is impl is burned into their head. They'll remember it for they'll remember it for weeks or even months months to come. That's and and that and that, ladies and gentlemen is the end of today's lesson on Pro Wrestling 101. Now, it is t now it is time for our Money in the Bank Pay-Per-Preview. Pre pre money, 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 money. <laughs> now, the money in the bank, the money in the bank pay-per-view has been, the money in the bank concept has been very pop, popular in WWE. The concept itself was first originated in 2005 by legendary Y2, the legendary wrestler Y2J Chris Jericho. Essentially, as an original concept where six superstars would compete in a ladder match to pull down a briefcase, which had a championship contract for a world championship match up to anywhere it could be cashed in anywhere up to one year essentially whoever won the briefcase the champ the contract was as good as gold you could cash you could cash in on raw you could cash in on smackdown you could cash in at the next pay-per-view if you had the patience of job you could you could even keep the contract all the way to next year's wrestlemania and be and and find yourself in the main event now of course we've had several popular popular shocking cash-ins over the years. You had, you've had Edge in 2005, the first Money in the Bank winner. You had, you had Art, you had Rob Van, Van Dam in 2006. You had I am awesome! <laughs> that, that, that he is, the rated R superstar. The truth. <laughs> For me, failure is not an option. It never, it never was. I am the rated R superstar. Having fun in there, guys. And anyway, it's the money in the bank. The money in the bank concept has provided for some of the many shocking moments in in, in, re in over the years in WWE history. And this, th and this coming Sunday proves to be no different. As for the first time at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, there will be a ladder match to determine a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion along with the traditional Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, this all came about because of Daniel Bryan and his recent soldier, shoulder surgery being unable to defend the World Heavyweight Championship and sadly having to relin relinquish it to the authority. Now, it is up for grabs up for grabs with these eight part eight participants but first we, we first we start with a inter very interesting divas championship match between the current champion Paige and one half of the Funkadactyls Naomi now Naomi has proven in recent months to be one, one of the most athletically challenging super divas in the, in the division and even ups and even pinned Paige on, on, on a recent episode of, of Raw, proving her number one contendership for the Divas Championship. However, the little monkey wrench in this plan is Naomi's par partner in crime, Cam Cameron, who is upset that she isn't being taken seriously as a threat to Paige's Divas Championship. Now, how Cameron will play into this remains to be seen. How however, I don't. I can't imagine that this will be a straight, straight up one-on-one -on -one match, as I see Cameron Yang somewhere involved during during this match to either, either cost Paige a championship, or think that since she believes that she is more deserving of a championship match than Naomi, cost Naomi her title opportunity, opening up the up the potential for a triple threat match Divas Championship later down the line. So in 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 that in that in that in that same vein. I predict that Paige will retain her championship under dubious means. We move on now to a very uh, another divas match with a uh, bit of a with a bit of a twist. You have uh, Summer Rae versus Layla.
apologize for the technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. Suffice to say, Layla and Summer Rae have been having quite the uh, lover's quarrel over the, quarrel over the last uh, a few weeks over one Mr. Fan Dong Go. As you, as you may or may not know, Layla essentially... Fandango, Fandango essentially dumped Summer Rae via Twitter. Oh, <laughs> you can see here is Summer Rae on, Summer Rae on your left, Layla on your right, and Fandango sadly stuck in the middle. Summer Rae was dumped by Fandango on Twitter, real classy, and hooked up with Layla, who became Fandango's new dance partner. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean. And, and Summer Rae has, has been the proverbial woman scorned, essentially inserting herself into the relationship between Layla and Fandango, interfering in many of Fandango's matches to attack Layla, and lead to many a lovely cat fight. That would make, that would make Joey Styles happy. Try to find that sound effect. Anyway, any, anyway, a match has been made for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view with Summer Rae versus Layla, and of course you have, and of course they had a little twist in this one. Fandango, the special guest referee. Now this one will be very, very interesting. Will Fandango choose his current? lovely English lady love, Layla, or go back to his little, his little ray of sunshine. Oh, uh, man, I mean, this, this is actually a tough one to call, because neither, neither Diva's really had much momentum going into this, and it's, it'll be interesting to see if Fandango doesn't just up and leave the both of them and move on to greener pastures. That being said, mm, flip I'd say flip a coin. Uh, I'd say Layla. I say Layla gets the nod here. Now, moving. Now moving on, we have a WWE Tag Team Championship match that's going to prove to be loads of physical and quite the challenge for the for the bro, for the crazy brothers Uso. Yes, Jimmy and Jay Uso. Going up against the heavies of the wire. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yes, the sound you hear is the traditional Siva Tau formed by the Usos for every for every match. Supposed to promote intensity, build fire them up, and intimidate their opponents. A little fun fact right there. You have the you have the Usos, tag team champions, going up against the heavies of the wide family, Luke Harper. And the lovely Eric Rowan adorned in his sheet mask. Now, Rowan and Harper have proved that they can topple the tag team champions, pinning them individually in, ta in, in, single, in singles matches over, over the last couple of weeks. Catching flies in his mouth. <laughs> that is that is a awesomely creepy song. Actually, the funny the funny thing is, um, this past Monday, Rowan Harper came out to a completely different set of music. Um, he actually came out to harmonica playing of "He's Got the Whole World in His Hands," which, I mean, which, which pretty much sounded like they did it themselves. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was interesting to say the least. Um, but that being said, Rowan and Harper are proven to be the, great, the greatest challenge, the greatest physical challenge that the Usos have faced to, to, for their tag team titles. Now, considering that the, the, the Us, that the Wyatts could win the tag team titles, and that Bray Wyatt, who's in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match, could come away with the WWE World Heavyweight title, we could see the Wyatt family come away with all the big, the big gold belts. After, after this Sunday. 
and we could see and their movement and their white movement could spread and Bray Wyatt could really have the whole world in his hands come this Sunday. That being said, the Usos have turned away the heart the Wyatt family before, but I mean the Wyatts have just got a lot of momentum going into this. I got I just got a strange feeling that there's gonna be a big night for the Wyatt family. So I pick Harper I pick Harper and Rowan to take to take the belts. Uh, we move now we move on to a match that was made this past this past Monday between a the new interesting duo of Stardust of Stardust. When you wish upon a star and and Goldust going up against the stepbrother team of uh, Ryback and Curtis Axel. Rybaxel. Cody Rhodes has once again reinvented himself. A surprisingly good a surprisingly good mashup. I, 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 I like it. A little Mr. Perfect, a little, uh, little punk rock. It's, it's pretty cool. Anyway, you see, as you can see here, Cody Rhodes has once again reinvented himself as the star, as the bizarre, bizarre, astronomic stardust. A actual, it's actually a uh, tribute to his fa his father, Dusty Rhodes, who in a, who cultivated the stardust personality during his early early professional years down in Florida. Decided to bring it back to to the. Mo to the modern day, and they have found success in the last couple of weeks, having pin having upset Cur R Ryback and Curtis Axel this p this past Monday on Raw. That Ryback Axel didn't take that lying down and challenge the brothers Dust to a rematch at Money in the Bank. Now this will be interesting to see because I had talked over the last few weeks about it seemed like that Cody was ready to break off from Goldust, find forge his own path, possibly towards the WWE world title, and yet it seems like that he's willing to do anything to remain with his brother, to help it help their team find success. Now, whether that whether he truly means it, or if it's just uh, setting up Goldust for a big fall, remains to be seen. If they do plan on st sticking together, I certainly see I certainly see them picking up picking up another dominant win over right back. So, if this is all just a ploy by Cody to set up his brother Goldust for a big fall, then I'd say Ryback Baxel takes the nod here. But I'm hoping they stay together. I think that I think Goldust and 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 Stardust have great potential as an entertaining tag team, and I believe they'll get the they'll get the nod here coming this Sunday. Now. Moving on to the two big main event matches for Money in the Bank, we first have the traditional Money in the Bank contract match. As you can see here, the participants announced, we have Kofi Kingston, Rob Van Dam, Dolph Ziggler, the incomparable Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, who was actually inserted into the match this past, this past Monday, Mr. Bad News Barrett, your Intercontinental Champion, and slightly cut off here, although I don't think anyone would tell the difference anyway, the real American Jack Schwagger. Now, going to, now, oh, there's a lot of interest, there's, like with every Money in the Bank match, there's a lot of interesting storylines, a lot of intersecting storylines here. You have, of course, the feud between Ambrose and Rollins coming off the Shield breakup. You have Dolph, you have Dolph Ziggler and Wade Barrett. You even have Co you even have Co you even have the two jobbers to the stars, Kofi Kingston and Jack Swagger, all the way at the end, right here, right here, <laughs> right there. You you have a lot of interesting storyline, a lot of intersecting storylines here, and. The problem is not everyone has a lot of momentum, but Rollins has made his mark, laying, laying out a number of his competitors this past Friday on SmackDown and intending on taking down that briefcase and paving the way for his future as a WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Now, that being said, 
Kingston, like I said, Kingston and Swagger are jobbers to the stars. They're enhancement talent. Kingston, Kofi's essentially in there t- for the big spots, for the big, for the for the big lat- ladder spots. Essentially, maybe seeing him do a boom drop or a crossbody off the top of a ladder. And as, as Swagger is essentially in there to take the bait. He's essentially he's ladder bait. He, he's gonna he's gonna be taking a lot of those big 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 bumps. M- much much like RVD, much like Barrett. The big three, the big three in the middle right here, Ziggler, Rollins, and, and Ambrose. These three are the main ones. Ziggler has been very emotional. He's been very, in, he's intent on coming away with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Rollins, like I said, has been making his, leaving his mark in the last couple of weeks. And Ambrose, Ambrose is much, li- much like his personality in the Shield. He's the wild card in this match. He's the proverbial wild card. You'd, we don't know what's going to happen with him. R- Rollins had him put in this match so he could keep an eye on him, and yet Ambrose has just as much potential to come away with the WWE, with the with the contract. I mean, Orton could win. Randy Orton could win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Ambrose could come out in the sa- same night, cash in, and boom, you have a WWE World Champion that doesn't listen to the authority. That being said, though, that being said. If I had to make an honest decision right here, I'd say Rollins comes away way of the Money in the Bank briefcase. He's got the most momentum going into this match, and it'll be interesting to see that if, say, a big, big, a big good superstar like say John Cena comes away with this, if Rollins decides to come out and cash it in right away, like Kane did in 2010. So I'm going with Seth Rollins to come away with the, the briefcase. Speaking of John Cena. We move on to him and seven other superstars in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match. Now, like I said, this this match came about when the original WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Daniel Bryan, had to relinquish his championship due to having a shoulder injury that was going to keep him out for the next few, few couple months. Now, the competitors you have he, competitors you have here, you have the Demon Kane, who was ins- inserted into the match this past Monday. You have the United States champion, the Celtic brawler Sheamus. You have Alberto Del Rio, i.e., hasn't Mr. hasn't been relevant in the last two years. You have you have the Swiss Superman, the King of Swing, and and the Paul Heyman. Oh yes, my other client, my other client besides the one who ended under. Who was the one in 20 and one, and ended the Undertaker's undefeated streak? You have you have that other cl- Paul Heyman guy, Cesaro. You have the dominant, the dominant Mr. Oh, you warned me. You warned me you were going to do the picture. I saw it coming. You have the dominant, the powerful, the powerful force known as Roman Reigns. You have John Cena. You have Randy the Orton. The champ is here. You have the first ever WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Randy Orton. And you have who I consider to be, to be the wild card in this match, the leader of the Wyatt family. And my wardrobe inspiration, Bray Wyatt. Now, much like the w, much like the contract, the Money in the Bank contract match, there are a lot of intersecting storylines and a lot of variables to consider in this match. You, of course, you have Roman Reigns, who has proved to be nothing but dominant in the last couple of weeks, laying out, laying out, laying out Kane with spear, laying, laying out all his competition with spears, and telling everyone, and even getting in John Cena's face at one point and said, "Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who, who's in there. It doesn't matter who you are." I will dominate, I will find my way, and I will become the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Bold words. Of course, like I said, you have the first WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Randy Orton, who originally beat Cena in a ladder match to win said title. You have, you have, she- you have Sheamus, the U.S. Champion, who could come away with all the gold. But, and of course, you have Bray Wyatt, who if he wins, and, the, and Ryan, Rowan and Harper win, the Wyatt family could come away with all the gold. They could be unstoppable. That being said, I can tell you right now who's not going to win. Kane 
is not going to win. Sheamus is not going to win because he's United States champion. Secondary champions never win in these kind of matches. Like I said, Alberto Del Rio, uh, he's in this match and Dolph Ziggler isn't. <laughs> that, tells you all, that tells you all you need to know. He's in here to be fodder for everyone else. That's all Del Rio is going to be good for. Cesaro is going to probably have some big strength spots in this match because I've seen his deadlift superplex from, from just from the apron. I would love to see a deadlift superplex, superplex all the way off a ladder through maybe another ladder or table. There are going to be a lot of strong spots between him, Roman Reigns, and John Cena. Those will be interesting to see. Roman Reigns, I would like to think, is going to win the world championship, the WWE World Championship. The only issue I have, it would be considered a knee-jerk reaction. I feel like it's too soon. I mean, you had sit, take Daniel O'Brien for example. Everyone wanted him to win the WWE title right away at SummerSlam last year, and everyone was upset when he kept getting screwed out of it time after time after time after time. But when he finally had that big moment at WrestleMania. The people loved it. The people ate it up. I mean, the, the storyline, the buildup over, over the last seven, eight months, it paid off. And I feel like that if Roman Reigns has a similar storyline and a similar big-time payoff at WrestleMania next year, WrestleMania 31, I believe that it will pay off just as well for him as it did for Daniel Bryan. Now, of course, uh, Randy Orton... If I predict that Seth Rollins is going to win this, so it makes no sense for Ro for Orton to come away with the championship. It would make for a little interesting heel on heel conflict, but that does, on except with rare exceptions, doesn't usually work in the WWE nowadays. So that comes down to between John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Now, of course, John Cena would be the go-to guy. It would make him a 15-time world champion only being one championship away from the record 16-time champion, woo, the nature boy, Ric Flair. But, of course, you again, the wild card, Bray Wyatt. Now, just, uh, just picture this. The, the Wyatt family, tag team champions. Bray Wyatt, WWE world champion. He's over with the audience. He has a connection with them. He's great on, he's great on the mic. And he could be proved to be a daunting challenge for anyone who wants to step up and challenge him for the WWE World Championship. And since he and Cena have already feuded several times over the month, this could be just the thing to reignite their their feud. Except this time, it'll be it'll be for even bigger prize for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So that being said, I am staking my claim on this. Your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion will be Bray Wyatt. It may not be the most popular pick. Everyone may be going with Cena by default here to win the world, the WWE World title, just because maybe Rollins just might cash in if he wins. But I am go I'm going with my gut on this. I pick Bray Wyatt to come away with the, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and I say that the Wyatt family comes away with all the gold on Sunday night. Not quite applause, but thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for today. Now, if, you ha if you'd like to send me your own predictions, and if you have any questions about the show or the upcoming Money in the Bank pay-per-view, uh, you can email me at wrestlingconnection at gmail.com. That's wrestlingconnection, with a K-E-N-N, -N, connection, at gmail.com. You, uh, you, can, you can catch our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash the wrestling connection. Uh, you, you can also uh, contact me. You can also, tw you can also Twitter me, at wconnection. We are also still accepting applications for our for our new co-host. We're still searching for that special for that special someone. So if you if you if you got big interest in professional wrestling, if you're looking for some t TV time, some TV ex some television experience for your communications major, don't be afraid to get in contact with me. 
like I said, my, my email is wrestlingconnection at gmail.com. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're signing off. I hope you all have a, a great weekend. I hope you enjoy the Money in the Bank pay-per-view as much as I'm going to enjoy it. So be connected, get connected, and stay connected. Yeah, have a nice weekend. Ah!